Welcome back, casual gardeners. I've been seeing in the news that the 13 and 17 year broods of cicadas are both coming up this year, which means that in parts of the eastern and midwestern United States, the sounds of cicada courtship will be even more deafening than usual. But what does that mean for our gardens? There are actually hundreds of species of cicadas on every continent except Antarctica. So wherever you live in the world, this video may be of some use to you. There are chapters that you can use to skip to topics of interest, but as usual, YouTube and I would prefer if you watched the whole video. First of all, what the heck even are cicadas? With their wide-spaced compound eyes and their translucent wings, they look kind of like giant alien houseflies. But cicadas aren't flies at all. Flies are members of phylogenetic order Diptera, and cicadas are not. Phylogenetics is how scientists organize the different categories of life, by the way. But don't worry, most of this video is not going to be big, obnoxious science words. Some people call cicadas locusts. But locusts are a type of grasshopper in order Orthoptera. Cicadas are obviously not grasshoppers, and they are certainly not members of order Orthoptera. Cicadas are members of order Hemiptera, also known as the true bugs. Some other members of Hemiptera that you may recognize are squash bugs, box elder bugs, assassin bugs, and aphids. What all members of Hemiptera have in common is that they literally suck. Some of them suck plant juice, and others suck animal juice. Not all bugs are bad for our gardens because they suck on our insect pests, like assassin bugs do. Let's talk about the cicada life cycle, since the most exciting part of their life cycle is what's causing all of these headlines here in 2024. I'm going to start with a female cicada carrying fertilized eggs. The female finds a tender young twig on a tree or woody shrub, and then she uses a special scalpel-like growth on her abdomen to carve V-shaped grooves in which she will lay her eggs. Having accomplished that, her life is over and she goes off to die. Six to eight weeks later, the eggs hatch and cicada nymphs emerge. A nymph is a smaller version of the insect that resembles the adult form. Cicada nymphs are squishy little things, and they have legs, but no wings. The nymph falls to the ground, where it will burrow one or two feet underground, looking for roots to feed on. The nymph will live underground through five growth stages called instars. Each growth stage will be a little larger than the previous one, and will a little more closely resemble the adult form of the cicada. They feed from xylem in the tree roots. That is the tissue that carries sap up from the roots through the trunk and into the leaves. Cicadas are split into two main categories, annuals and periodicals. Annual cicadas make an appearance every year, while periodical cicadas emerge all at once, in a massive cacophonous orgy of sound and reproduction. All cicadas will take at least two to five years to mature through all five of their instars. But periodical cicadas, the ones making all the headlines this year, will either take 13 or 17 years to mature fully and emerge. There are two theories about why they do this. One theory is that by spacing their emergences so far apart and at prime number intervals, the cicadas are more readily able to overwhelm their predators just by numbers alone. And that means that individual cicadas are more likely to survive to reproduce. The other theory is that emerging every 13 years or every 17 years will help prevent hybridization between the 13 and 17 year periodical cicadas. If that's the case, then we get to find out after this year what hybridization does to cicadas if there are hybrids. 
Whether they're annual or periodical, at the end of their fifth instar, they will emerge from the ground, climb the nearest convenient plant, and go through their final shed to reveal their adult form. It's mostly the males that make the sound we're all familiar with. Large convocations of cicadas can be as loud as 100 decibels, loud enough that prolonged exposure can damage our hearing. Once the males have found females and mated, they will soon die. Females last a little bit longer, long enough to find suitable places and lay their eggs. For every cicada, the average time from emergence to death is about four to six weeks. Despite both juvenile and adult cicadas feeding on plant sap, most of the damage is to tender, woody trees and shrubs from the females laying their eggs in twigs. Too much damage to the cambium, and those twigs will die. But long-term harm to trees is minimal. So unless you're growing an orchard, it's safe to consider cicadas essentially harmless to your garden. They prefer feeding on trees and shrubs, and will, for the most part, leave our annual crops alone. Their favorite trees are oaks, maples, willows, and ash. But they are opportunistic feeders, and they may feed on any tree or shrub that is near where they emerge. Cicadas have no natural defenses, and with all that noise they make, they can be pretty easy to find. So they have a lot of natural predators. They can't bite or sting. They're not poisonous or venomous. They're essentially chonky little walking protein bars. Mole populations may actually increase the year before emergence because there are just so many fat, juicy cicada nymphs underground for them to eat. And conversely, we'll sometimes see mole populations crash a little bit the year of or after emergence because there's so much less food for the moles. We'll also see populations of some larger birds responding to the availability of cicadas in emergence years by getting larger. Cicadas are eaten by small mammals, reptiles, larger birds, carnivorous insects, and spiders. There are a lot of critters that are taking advantage of those chonky walking protein bars. Any uneaten cicadas will just decompose back into the soil, providing nutrients for decomposers, detritivores, and eventually for the plants in our gardens. Cicadas are ugly bugs, but I think if you look at them in the right light, you'll also see that they're, in a way, also beautiful and strange. If you live in the eastern or midwestern states, let me know in the comments how this cicada year was for you, because I'm genuinely curious. Say hello to those chunky walking protein bars for me. Here in Utah, we only get the annual cicadas, so it's cicada season every year, but they're not as loud or as obnoxious. And in most parts of Utah, we don't hear them at all. I think it's safe to say that cicadas are neither friends nor foes in the garden. They're just a strange and kind of wonderful thing that nature does to our gardens, to be enjoyed or reviled, depending on how we feel in the moment. Thank you for joining me in my garden today, and I hope you have a wonderful time in your own.